Weird sciencey facts that boggle my mind. The battery technology of tomorrow is starting to look pretty sweet. Literally. One of the biggest obstacles for the next generation of technologies is not where we get the energy to power them, but ways to store that energy. Energy exists in two basic forms. Kinetic energy, which is any energy that's doing energy things. This is your engine running, or you running, or a plane flying, or a ball falling. And then there's potential energy, which is stored energy. This is the energy that's not currently doing any energy things, but could be utilized to do energy things. This is the gasoline in your tank, the charged up battery in your phone, a ball on a shelf, even wood that's not on fire. Now, energy is all around us, and there's lots of forms of it, but one of the big problems is it's usually not in the form you need it to be. The wind blowing past me right now is constant kinetic energy, but I can't use it to turn on my lights or drive my car unless I find a way to harness it and turn it into energy that can do those things. And then there's lots of types of potential energy, like a lake behind a dam, or oil in the ground or, you know, wood that's not on fire. And turning all of these forms of potential energy into the types of kinetic energy you need when you need it is, again, not always easy. So the thing the human race and all living things, really, are always trying to do is find the most efficient way to turn kinetic energy into potential energy and then back into kinetic energy we can use when we want to use it. And for most of industrialized human history, we've gotten this energy by burning stuff. And even once we invented chemical batteries, they were bulky, heavy, and had really low energy density, unlike Sophie here, who has lots of energy density. But they were practical enough to power certain things like portable electric lights and electric starters for your car. But it wasn't until the advent of lithium ion batteries that chemical electric batteries got energy dense enough to power things like compact cell phones and actual cars. Well, for any distance anyway. Electric cars have existed for well over a hundred years, but their range and speed has always been limited. However, as incredible and energy dense as lithium ion batteries are, they're still about a hundred times less energy dense than gasoline. Now, burning gasoline isn't very efficient. Only about 15 to 30 percent of the energy that's contained in it is actually turned into useful energy when we burn it. This is why a 90 plus percent efficient electric motor can compete with an internal combustion engine when paired with a lithium ion battery today. However, that still requires a 1,200-ish pound lithium-ion battery to compete with a 100-ish pound tank of gasoline. Now, in a car or a truck, that's not a real big deal, but if we ever want to have viable commercial flight or sea travel, we need a lot more energy density in batteries. And if we ever want to have nearly 100% grid-scale renewable energy, we need to be able to store energy when we're making more of it, when more sun is shining and more wind is blowing, but we're not using it. So when there's less sun and wind, we still have power stored up. Now, weight on grid-level storage isn't as big of a deal because you can have a big facility to house all these batteries, but the resource scarcity and cost to make grid level storage lithium ion batteries is an obstacle as well. So scientists and engineers are always looking for that sweet spot to make energy storage more dense. And there's a good chance that Mary Poppins might have had the answer all along to finding that sweet spot because it just may be a spoonful of sugar. Now sugar in the past few years has popped up as a potentially tasty solution to energy storage in a couple of different ways. In 2014, a couple smart people at Virginia Tech made a sugar fuel cell that could power a cell phone for 10 days. And how they did it is both surprising and also kind of like, duh. The humans and animals are powered by sugar. Glucose is what makes us run. Sugar contains a lot of energy. It is very energy dense all by itself. And these geniuses were like, hey, why don't we just make a metabolic battery? And, and that's, that's what they did. They have enzymes that decompose the sugar. As the sugar decomposes, that releases energy, carbon dioxide, and water. And when you want to charge your battery back up, you just fill it back up with sugar. Now there's a couple obstacles to making this a mainstream solution. Well, it contains a lot of energy. The voltage is really low, only about a half a volt versus like three and a half volts in your lithium ion battery in your phone. And that low voltage means you can't transfer energy from that sugar fuel cell to your device very quickly. The other problem is it's not like super practical to keep a bunch of sugar around to recharge your cell phone. But now knowing that we can extract energy from organic material like that uh, opens up new worlds of possibilities to explore in energy storage and energy creation. Now another type of battery that's shown a lot of potential is lithium sulfur batteries. They have five times more energy density than traditional lithium ion. And the materials required to make them are a lot more abundant and environmentally friendly to obtain. And that sounds great, so why are we using it? With that kind of energy density, we could have electric planes tomorrow. And the problem is charging. The positive sulfur electrode expands and contracts a lot every time it's charged and discharged. That causes that electrode to form 
cracks and fall apart after a few charging cycles. And as those sulfur particles from the electrode get into the battery, they begin to attach and grow on the negative lithium electrode, eventually consuming it. Also a problem. Now they've developed a compound that helps the sulfur electrode stay intact for more charging cycles. But it wasn't until last year that they came up with a pretty sweet idea to make the sulfur stop growing on the lithium electrode just adding a pinch of sugar. The glucose forms a web or something that keeps the sulfur from building up on the lithium, and then it can go more charge cycles. We still have a long ways to go before we get to commercial viability of lithium sulfur batteries, but this could have been the giant leap forward that we needed to make them a reality. Now, another cool type of battery you may never have heard of is called a flow battery. A flow battery uses two specialized liquids, and when those liquids flow alongside of each other, it creates an electrical current. Hence, flow battery. Now, there's a couple problems with flow batteries. One is, is liquid is heavy. Their energy density is pretty low. The chemicals in the liquids tend to be corrosive and toxic, which means that they're maintenance intensive and environmentally damaging if they leak. And managing their discharge rates and peak energy levels is difficult. That is, apparently, until you add, you guessed it, sugar. New flow batteries using sugar have increased peak energy by 60%. It better regulates the flow, allowing battery discharge to last for longer periods of time. And in recent tests, they've put it through continuous charge discharge cycles for a year with almost no losses in capacity. Well, they'll probably never be what powers your electric car or your cell phone due to the weight and liquid and all that stuff. You can scale them up to damn near any size just by making some bigger tanks for them. All of that means that with a little more research and development, these sweet new New flow batteries could be the solution for grid level storage. Well, it may be some time before you get to start using one of these sweet new batteries. The fact that quite possibly the secret ingredient we've been missing to make our batteries better is just a spoonful of sugar. Well, that is pretty mind boggling.